Hello guys, we're back in Hendon for a mock test. This is one of my learners. Um, just using a dash cam today because I didn't want to be she didn't want to be filmed, so we're just gonna be doing a dash cam and I'll talk you through how we did. Nice and quiet at this time. You've seen some of the other videos where it's really busy here, but right now it's quite quiet because um, there's no one really around doing any tests, which is why we could quickly use it. Uh, position yourself nicely there, checking both left and right. No problem with that stage. Remember there, sometimes people mess up by going too far to the right, but our, our learner did really well here. Keeping it slow through this junction here. Uh, through the whole estate actually is keeping it nice and slow. Uh, this junction people do sometimes come out without checking, so just be wary of that. And you've got someone in the road working, so just slowing it down a bit more just to make sure it's extra safe. Whenever you have people working in the road where you're driving, just go past them really slowly, don't ignore them, which is what some learners do. They just uh, think, oh, they're, out, they're out of my way, so I'm just gonna go quickly through, but you wanna treat them as a hazard and go slowly through there. Going to the end of the road, we're going to be turning left. Now before the mock test, uh, this learner had issues with checking mirrors before signal, but uh, I think because we talked about it, it was okay with those. Turn nicely left and then straight away we've got a vehicle in the road, responded to that quite nicely. Now they've gone, we can carry on. So I don't know if you can tell, but in the distance there's a lorry in our lane there. Um, ideally, when you see something blocking your lane like this, you want to move out the way early so that you're not having to deal with anybody else that's behind you that might try to come to and try to go around you. But he's left it, he managed it, but he left it quite late. I would have gone in there a bit uh, earlier. And then here we're going straight at the traffic lights. So I've repeated it twice that we're going straight at the traffic lights because he was in the wrong lane here to go around the lorry because he went around the lorry but should have gone back to the left. But uh, I had to remind him that we're going straight uh, which is why he's gone back to the left. So ideally if you've gone past a, a vehicle you should go back to the left lane. Uh, he does have an issue with this later on during the test, so, so keep watching and uh, I'll talk you through the mistake he made further down. So we are on a, on a hill here, just waiting for the lights to change. Uh, generally speaking, our learner is not very, it's not very, um, it's not bad with hill starts actually, but we see further down, there's a slight issue with one of the hills, but on this one, I think it does okay. On this section here, the straight is a bit weird because it's a bit to the right. So you wanna be kind of paying attention to where exactly straight is because sometimes learners here get confused. And the people on the right lane next to us should be turning right onto the dual carriageway. But you wanna keep an eye on them as well in case some of them just change their minds and go straight. So position nicely to go straight across. Dealt with that quite nicely actually. And then here we're gonna ask the learner to uh, pull over on the left in a safe place. So check the mirrors and signaled. If you look here, they're gonna stop opposite a driveway. And there's a space just ahead there they could have used. So this was a fault for positioning normal stops. 
So it was a minor, but if a, if a car did try to come now and try to park in that driveway, or if a car was trying to come out of that driveway, then that would turn into a serious. So be careful of these situations. If the examiner's told you to pull over in a safe place and there's a parking bay, use that instead of uh, blocking your driveway. Then here we're gonna start the independent driving, which was end of the road, turn left, traffic lights, turn left, and then traffic lights, turn right. So that's what we've uh, discussed. And then you just got my learner to repeat that and ask if he's not sure where we're going and ask him plenty of time. So this is a very steep hill here. We try to move off. We see what's gonna happen. So he's doing his checks, looking around. Hasn't got a biting point at this stage and then the car rolls back, you see? But then he stops it before it becomes a problem. Then he sorts it out, looks around again and moves off. So if he was rolling back further or if there was another car behind us, then I would have to intervene, which would then turn it into a serious. To avoid that, you just want to have your biting point before you release handbrake when you're on the hill. But sometimes learners forget that, especially after they've pulled over and then drive on again. So here we're just waiting for the end of the road to turn left. But a lot of learners, they'll start indicating around here or just a bit before. They forgetting that the end of the road means until the road is finished. So they either try to take the next left or the left before that. But the end of the road just basically means until the road can't go any further. That's the end. That's where you want to turn left. So like here, for instance, the end of the road is in sight. But you want to go past this road first before you do a mirror checks and signal. And notice the speed is changing there as well. Yeah, it's checking left and right. Can't really see with this camera, but uh, when he goes, it's gonna be safe because there's no faults on this one here. You see straight to zebra crossing. So sometimes when you turn, you have to be really paying attention. And then, the tr and then the speed changes again to 30 pretty much straight away. So just a short, short section on that, of that road was uh, 20 for us. It was 20 further down the other way, but just for us it was only for a few yards that it was 20 miles an hour. So remember this is still part of the independent driving. So he's going to be turning, supposed to be turning left at the next traffic lights. Here the zebra crossing is a bit blocked on that side, so he done really well to slow down there. So at this point he's got no signal on so I'm thinking he's forgotten that we're turning left um, but I just wanted to see what he was going to do and then as we got closer I'm thinking okay he's forgotten but then he slows down a bit and turns without a signal on which is why he got a fault for a uh, signal turning without a signal there so it can be a serious if it affects other people badly but it didn't really affect anybody there but you still get a fault for that but if it does affect other people you can uh, definitely be a serious fault. if you keep doing it too many times then it can also be uh, a serious fault going downhill now remember we still on the independent driving so we've done the left at the end of the road, we've done the left at the traffic lights, the next one now would be right at the traffic lights. So if you're not familiar with the area, you won't know where the lights are. So as you go around this bend, that's when you can kind of start seeing, okay, something's a bit different, there's lights up, there, up ahead. And then the lane splits into two, so you want to be positioning yourself to the right nice and early like our learner has done here. So that was good. So because the car in front is turning right as well, this is going to make it slightly easier for our learner to kind of no way to position themselves because when you're the first car if you're not like you know familiar with these kind of turns it can be really difficult to figure out which way to position yourself 
but with another car in front, sometimes it makes it easier. If you're very unlucky, you might get a car in front of you that when the driver doesn't know what they're doing, but that's very rare. But in this situation, you see the, the driver in front kind of position themselves uh, towards the middle and a bit to the right so that the van on that side can be on a passenger side, which is the best position to be in on this kind of junction. Just checking any more cars coming down the road. So well done. Sometimes learning will just follow the car in front and um, and make a mistake with the other car coming towards, but I learned I done well to wait a bit there. Could have gone a bit earlier, but um, that's fine. And then also went to the middle lane to start with, but then position themselves to the left, uh, which is okay. It would have been better to just aim for the left lane straight away to save yourself having to change lanes, but this is also okay. So this is a 50 section here, coming up to a bend, so our learner's not going that fast. Could be going a bit faster, but coming up to a bend, we also got some traffic lights up ahead as well. So um, it wasn't too terrible at this stage, but you see further down, the speed is actually an issue, which we'll see in a minute. So slowing down nicely for those cars that are turning in front. But then here, once we've gone through the green light, and I should have sped up now, because remember it's still a 50 mile an hour road, but you see, if you look at the speed limit there, it says about 27, but on the dial on the car, it's showing about 31, which is still not good, because this, this is a 50 zone, and the road is clear, but then now you've got vans having to overtake, because you're going too slow. So this is when you've got a uh, serious for going uh, too slow on this kind of road here, could have been going a bit faster. So we've done the first section of the independent driving. We're doing the second bit now, which is following signs for Finchley. So just looking out for any signs for Finchley as we go forward. And around here, the lanes kind of disappear. So you've got to be very careful that you stick to your lane properly because you see there, there's no lines to separate the lanes. So you just have to be very careful as you go through, checking the mirrors and make sure you're sticking to your side. So there's a sign for Finchley just further down, just this one here saying Finchley is the next left, which is immediately there. So our learner signaled Check the mirror and I'm going to the left, which was very good. But here, once they've turned, they should have cancelled their signal, but they've left the signal on for this turn. There's a turn on the left, they left it on to go past that. It's still on right now. So at this point, I'll close my window just so they can hear that their signal is still on, but they haven't really taken uh, the hint and they've carried on with their signal on. going past this road again with the, with the left signal still on and then by this stage they left it on for too long which then it was a serious fault for signal and then we're taking the next road on the left Check their mirrors. That was very good. At one point, I thought they were going to, our learner was going to get too close to the left, but uh, he managed it well there. And people were being cooperative, stopping for us nicely over there. And then now we're pulling over to do. Uh, the parallel park exercise. So here, uh, we've told the learner, don't worry about blocking the driveway as you're stopping because we're just gonna be here for a bit. But if the examiner hasn't told you that, try to aim for like a raised curb or a parking bay. But at times they'll tell you, pull over on the left please, but don't worry about blocking a driveway for now or on this occasion, just to let you know that you can block the driveway, you're not gonna get a fault for that. So now we're just waiting for uh, a safe gap. I've explained to the learner what we need to do. So pulling up next to the car and then reversing 
into the space in front of it finishing anywhere within two car lengths and they can finish blocking the driveway but just don't go onto the driveway so that's the wording that they'll use on the test for the parallel park exercise so pulling up beside it nicely getting straight into reverse so here there is space for cars to go past as, uh, as we wait for them. If there isn't space and the cars are waiting for you up there, just start the maneuver, or look around obviously first and start the maneuver. And then once they start coming towards you again, you can stop again, let them go past. But uh, if there's space like it is here, just wait for them to go past. And then once, they, once it's clearer, you start doing your maneuver. You've got to be really patient here. Started off nicely. So, well, the learner here wasn't really checking the left mirror properly to see how close they were to the curb. So they were a bit wide and they stopped, they secured the car. Um, usually that indicates that you, you're done, but if you've seen that it's not in probably you can just make adjustments which is what our learners doing now because they realize they're a bit too wide and then these vans are going past us but they're not really anywhere near us at this point and they've, they've adjusted properly so yeah when you're doing this make sure you, you can look in your little mirror and if this road was narrow and those cars are going past just stop the car and um, let them go past first before you uh, continue making adjustments. And then off we go. Down this very nice green road. As you can see, it gets a bit narrow with cars coming through. Done well to stop there. You can see there's a lot happening here. So, one minute it can be really quiet, and the next minute, lots could be happening. So, just got to be staying alert. See, more people are doing maneuvers. And if you're experienced enough, you know like when to slow down, when to stop. The test is not just about how you can keep driving. Sometimes you need to show the examiner that you can actually decide when to stop properly, when to slow down, all that kind of stuff is really important on the, on the test and in just in general driving as well. So here we're turning left. But again, our learners forgotten to uh, put a signal on. So we've got a signal fault there. And then they've turned a bit too sharply, clipping the curb a tiny bit which is a steering uh, minor there. It wasn't like over the top uh, on the curb, it was just a tiny clip, but enough to get a, a fault. Then at these lights, we're just going straight uh, second X. Not second exit, it's not a roundabout, we're just going straight at these traffic lights. So this time we went into the correct lane nice and early, which is good. For some reason, learners get confused here. Um, a lot of learners that are taking here get confused when the light goes green, especially when they see their cars coming from the opposite direction trying to turn in front of them they think that they have to wait for them for some reason but we have priority if you're coming from this side and you're going straight ahead you just need to keep moving and those cars that are coming from the opposite direction should just wait for you in the middle of the junction there but if you're obviously if you're if you're scared and you're moving a bit hesitant 
they will go in front of you. So like this, for instance, just go through, then that car on the right has to wait. But if you're unsure, it can be confusing for the other drivers around you. So going straight through, nice and empty here. So here it's not going that fast, going about 20, but it's slightly uphill and the learner's going into third gear here, which the car started struggling a bit because it's going uphill and it's not going that fast. And then they've tried to gear down to two, but they've left their foot heavily on the gas, which is uh, why they've got a, a gas accelerator fault for here. Remember if you're changing gears, you want to come off the gas fully, clutch down, gear down, and then bring the clutch up and then press the gas. If you keep your foot on the gas, you're gonna, one, it's gonna make, make a lot of noise and then when, when you bring the clutch up, it might go too fast. So just be wary of that. And then as you approach the next traffic lights here, we're turning left. Car is spinning in front of us, and uh, luckily they're out of the way. So here, if you look, we're going left here, but uh, the traffic light on the, on the front is is red. But if you look on the floor here, this light doesn't doesn't really apply to us because there's no line for us here. It's just a giveaway situation where you have to go forward past this traffic light. So I've uh, had to let the learner know that this light doesn't really apply to you. Uh, it happens there a lot actually on tests. So watch out for those kind of junctions. If there's no white line next to the light uh, in the bit that you're in, that light doesn't apply to you. So he got a serious fault for um, traffic lights here. Should have gone straight to the giveaway line. Going through this bit can get quite busy. It's got a lot of shops here, people parked up. It's quite narrow as well. Wasn't too eventful, there's nothing really going on. Usually it's quite busy there, but Right now it was fine. Then we're taking the next road on the left. Turned in nicely and straight away we've got cars that are stationary. Dealt with that pretty nicely as well. Then this is quite narrow. You sometimes you get people like flying through here. Like this car is going quite fast for this section here forcing our learners to slow down a bit so yeah they've done well because if you see a car f going through really fast you want to slow down a bit just to minimize that risk so he done well there we're taking the next road on the right So this is quite a long road on the right there, so be careful that, that you don't turn on the wrong on the wrong side. It's quite a long junction, should I say? But our learner did well and went to the correct side and turned nicely. As we go through here, this, this bit is normally quite quiet. Not really much happens here, but still be careful because you see there, there was a person uh, in the road letting off a passenger. So just uh, be alert the whole time. And they were coming up to the traffic light situation where a lot of people get tripped up. We're turning right at the next traffic lights. And you can see on the floor there, 
tactical arrows telling you position left, position left. But sometimes uh, a few months ago, those would have been rubbed out a little bit and there wouldn't be enough to you for you to see. But uh, luckily this time it was visible and it's also got cars coming on that side, making sure that you don't go on the wrong side because a lot of people go on the wrong side as they approach that traffic light. But luckily for this time, it was fine. going up this so we're just being cautious this of the second car because sometimes uh when one car comes out another car will try to come out quickly as well just right behind them but luckily this they didn't do that uh, we're going to be turning left at the next roundabout and you see there there's two little lefts or well, there's one first one there but that leads back to this side anyway so but this is the left that you want to be taking Then pulling over on the left in a safe place. So here we're gonna do uh, an angled start. So I've asked the learner to pull up, leaving about one car length between us and the car in front, which is done very nicely. And the next bit was just to be to move on again. doing their checks, turning nicely. So the point of this exercise is to see that you can move away from or move off next to other cars without getting too close to them. So make sure you do uh, good steering, also requires good clutch control as well. And making sure that there's no one around as you're moving off because sometimes it's so tight that when there's um, oncoming vehicles, you might turn too wide towards them. So watch out for that as well. And then here we're turning right at the traffic lights. Can be quite a long wait here because this is a, a busy junction that's, uh, you know, got sometimes lets one side go at a time so it takes a while for the lights to change so when there's a lot of cars in front of you turning right you've got to be very careful that you don't go through with them if there's not enough space for you but here the lights are you know still green but now they're changing then a learner has stopped uh, I think that was quite a good decision actually because if they tried to carry on they might have been stuck in the middle while the other cars will get a green light so he done well there So here again, you just want to be checking to see where you're going to position yourself once the light goes uh, goes green. Checking, because now we're at the front now, we, it's going to be harder to decide where to go because we, on the other junction we were turning right onto the dual carriageway, there was a car in front of us which led the way, but now that our learner's in front, he has to be thinking now about, okay, where am I going to go once the light goes green, where am I going to position myself, where are the other cars that are coming from the opposite direction going to position themselves. So you want to have a plan way before the light goes to green so that when it comes time to it, 
it's a lot easier to execute. So like now it's going to green. So you're going to be positioning towards the right. See the arrow on the floor there? So he's positioning himself quite nicely actually. And then he's creeping forward to see if any cars are coming through and there's nothing. And then carry on. So here again, he should have gone straight for the middle lane, but uh, he's aimed for the... So he should have gone straight for the left lane, should I say, but he's aimed for the middle lane, which is not a big deal at the beginning to start with. He could have gone to the left afterwards, but you see he's still sticking to the middle lane for quite a long time. Then now you've got cars going past him uh, from the left side as well. So at this point, because there's lots of cars on the left, um, you can still, you'll be okay in the middle, but there is, there's a point when you should actually start going back to the left if it becomes clearer. So at this point, I don't think he's realized about being in, in the left, which, which happens a lot actually on tests. People don't just don't think about it. They just forget that they're supposed to be driving on the left side of the road. Or in the left lane, should I say. So by this point, I've mentioned to him that the next traffic lights were turning left, which is when uh, he decided to start thinking about taking and checking his mirrors and signaling going back towards the left lane. Could have been in there for a long time before, but because of that, got a serious for um, normal driving position there. So when you get to like around here, you're pretty much near the end of your test, but don't get too relaxed. I was talking to um, some people the other day when I was doing a live stream and they were talking about how they failed in the, in the last 40 seconds of the test, which happens. So, you know, just because you're near the end, don't get too relaxed. You want to still stay focused the whole time. Think about everything that you need to do until they've told you to park up and switch the engine off. The test is still on and they're still marking you so. Stay focused. So we're turning left at these lights. back to 30 miles an hour which uh, that sign a lot of people miss maybe they should put it a bit further down I don't know or maybe put another reminder further down but a lot of people miss that signal or that sign actually as they turn into that road because you're so focused on steering and controlling your speed that you're not really thinking about that sign there at that point Then here we're taking the second road on the right, which is going back into the estate where the test area is, where the test center is. So waiting for that car to go. And then there's that pedestrian there as well, but he's uh, showing his intentions by stopping, which was good, which made, made it easier for our learner to turn. Going back into the test center, just going nice and slow again. So sometimes here you might see a lot of learners around here as well. So just be cautious of them and also pedestrians walking around freely. So be wary because obviously the test is still on. 
you haven't finished yet so just be cautious as you go through and then turning left into the test center so this bit here can be quite narrow but our learner has stopped for that car but they wait for us a little bit as well so we carried on so normally on your test they'll get you to just stop somewhere around here but I don't want to uh, block anybody that's got their test coming out so we went further down to discuss uh, the test so that's it guys I hope you guys enjoy that I hope you find it useful uh, if you did remember to subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll see you in the next one guys